says. <laughs> So we need a motion to authorize me to sign David. I'm going to quickly authorize the county to share frequencies with Edwards County. Second that. And it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say sign. Motion carried. Last year at this time, and we're, we're doing a little bit better with a little bit more cash this year, so I can see we're, we're building that back up a little bit, so I think that looks pretty good for the county general. I, I know the road department has a lot of money to spend yet, so that's in the summer here. That's always a big factor until we get that done. But as compared to a year ago, I thought we were looking pretty good. So, and then there's my pie graph, my breakout. I think I got that right this time. <laughs> <laughs> my big 
pretty graph there. And then this, the last page is the sad page of our big interest earnings. So. Well, that is terrible. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Someday that'll come back. I mean, yeah. I really, it's nice to be able to say, oh, well, we saved three mils in interest savings. You know, yeah. that's a lot. When you can save a few mils for the county. So. But on the other hand, when people want to borrow, they're kind of enjoying yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, any questions on that? 20,000, that's not even a quarter of a mil, is it? No. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well bury it in Ken's backyard. <laughs> 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 oh, I got an email just a little bit ago. It's from the Norton County Register of Deeds. And it says, Lillian, just thought I would let you know that my family and I stayed in Stafford on Friday evening and Saturday this last weekend. We stayed at the Stafford Motel. My son Heath and my daughter have just stayed at the Little Field House Pavilion. Claire Moore catered our breakfast on Saturday morning at the Spigger House. We had rehearsal at the wedding and the wedding at Calvary Baptist Church. Shannon Bauer from Hudson catered our rehearsal supper and we gathered at the meeting room at the Littlefield House Pavilion for supper Friday night. Don and Suzanne Hildebrand and many of the Hildebrands around Stafford have gotten, we have gotten acquainted with this last weekend. Anyway, Nathan and Andrew Spear, Ken Hildebrand, Josh Hildebrand are my son Heath's farmhouse brothers from K-State. He had a bachelor party at the Marlin and Kathy Spare Farm on Friday night around the block party. Lori's wedding is beautiful decorated, blah, blah. After the wedding, my husband's family of about 21 met at the gathering place in Stafford and we ate supper before returning to our respective homes. Um, June 1st, Tabitha, Tabitha and I had driven to St. John and had lunch with Don and Suzanne Hildebrand and family before Lori's wedding shower at the Calvary Baptist Church in the afternoon. Suzanne had shown me the house where your mother lives and we had driven around St. John and seen the school and I believe the courthouse and up around the track and football field. Just wanted to wanted to let you know that we really enjoyed visiting Stafford County and some of the residents of St. John and Stafford. Yeah. So he's on the Register of Deeds in Norton. Is that right? Um, yes. Oh. Norton County. Her That's name's right. Wanda Vincent. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Just got that little note. Thought I would yeah. pass it on. Revenue jumped in Stafford County. I mean, we <laughs> yeah, well, no <laughs> and wedding. Yeah, we need more weddings. I already have one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Will Reese says. Jerry, back. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, I have I something quick. Okay. Yeah. Two. Yeah. yeah. I don't have yeah, a problem with that. Because <clears throat> he even made the comment that that's going to be yeah. tied. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, our Economic Development Board had its monthly meeting this month, uh, or this morning. Um, we have a board member who's been on since the beginning um, and has new responsibilities both in work and in uh, he's taken on the presidency of a school board along with uh, also being a representative of the South Central Community Foundation, which is not an insignificant amount of time. So he has said that he would like to transition off the board with those new responsibilities and son, Chad Fisher. So um, the bylaws of our organization basically provide for economic development board to be a nominating committee and the board of commissioners actually appoints to the board. So they do have a nomination to give to you. It's Ryan Ruerts. Um, he's from Stafford, has grown up in the county and from Stafford, now works in St. John, so um, has a, and you probably know, works at, bank, works at the bank. Um, so you, does your board represent, do you try to balance your board of areas of representation or by where they live or? Yeah, we try to balance it. Yeah. So, um, there's seven board members. If I were to look at it, you could look at it school district, commission district, towns, it's kind of, so we've got um, 
Ned Oak from Maxville, Vera Hopperman, also she Seward covers that that school and commission district. Um, Jeremy Butler. Jeremy Butler as well, right? Um, from St. John, we have um, Josh Meyer and Chad okay. and. Um, Barb Albers is from Hudson, and Mary Jo Taylor is from Stafford. So, not as much representation from the eastern part. Ryan helps fit that bill a little bit too. But we're trying to keep an eye toward that. There's not specific districts that have to be filled that we're trying to, I think, try to keep things balanced with. It. Also, an eye toward just the skill set that people have that, to bring. Um, and Ryan's willing to serve and talk with him. So that's the, that's the nomination that's being presented. I'll make a motion. We appoint Ryan Roots to the, the Economic Development Board and Vacancy of Chad Fisher. Second. It's been moved and second. We appoint uh, Ryan Roots to replace Chad Fisher on Fair to Say Aye. Uh, all opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Do we need a letter to raise a nation from Chad, just for record? We, I, I, we put it on our minutes this morning. He had verbally visited with each person to just let them know. Um, you know it's, it's, so anyway, he wanted to talk to each, we never got a written letter, but we did, for the purposes of having it in, the, in some type of record, we did put it in our minutes. So they, they voted. To accept that. Okay. So. Yes. I don't know. It's not written out in the bylaws, the specific okay. procedure. Well, I'm just. Did look. Because on some of these boards, you know, on the elderly and whatever, whatever, they, you know, they submit a letter of resignation. And we accept it and then we appoint. So I, if, I think if it's in the minutes, that'll suffice. Any other great things? Question about on? your housing project. Mm -hmm. um, I've been thinking about this. Do you think it would be wise or something we should look into by contacting the cities to see if that's something they would be? If they would want to be the applicant as opposed to the county. Yes. I can do that. They are an eligible applicant. Um, if we look at it as a countywide project where we right. look at developing in more than one city, my I guess assumption has been that the county would be a strong, the more logical applicant. Um, if, if they're reviewing an application that is intended for countywide development, maybe it makes a difference. But that doesn't. Well, I just I, that's something I thought about. I thought you know, and I, and I didn't, didn't take the time to discuss this with the city councils or city representatives yeah. either. Was you know, is this something that Maybe we want their input on too, other than just us saying, sure, listen. <laughs> you know? The city of Stafford has provided the building lots right. in okay. Stafford, so has supported the, the concept. And all three cities have um, routinely write, written letters supporting uh -huh. the concept of um, development. So as I've written, I think, three different applications now where that type of um, and a letter of support was appropriate. That was very easy to get. <laughs> Everybody was well, I'm sure it was, but I just I, about as, how as I got to thinking about issue. that over the last week, but I thought, yeah, what are the cities? You know, maybe what that's something they should find. And you know, as as I've been thinking about too, what our discussions last week, I have prepared a um, presentation for the cities that I maybe assumed that. I, I didn't do that for you all. Um, maybe I should do that, is to bring here um, that presentation, and I have data that was collected through a formal housing needs assessment last year, and just share that with you guys. I can do that if that would be helpful. So I don't... The city applicant you know, has to say so the city who's going to live in the house. Maybe the city would might want to control that more than the county. I don't know. After you get it built, well, they, the economic development, well, the way I understand it, it would be the acting manager of the... You would be the acting manager, um, so you would determine... 
could qualify and still get a break. And then these houses would fall under neighborhood revitalization as well. Uh, not if they're they can't, not if they're a nonprofit owned. Well, nonprofits they pay taxes just oh, as they okay. yeah. They aren't they're they're income tax exempt, federal okay. income tax exempt, but you still pay sales tax or property tax as a nonprofit. So yes. That's one that was one other question I had. Which would be the responsibility of the owner of the, or whoever is occupying the, the house. No. Um, the owner. Or who else so the owner would be economic development or economic development sells that property to another owner. And can you do that under that grant? I mean, is there a time limit to... There is how a, reca a recapture provision if you choose to sell it. There may be, yes. Because I, I spoke with Chad last after last week's meeting about that that, that issue or topic. And, right. And that's one thing he you know we talked about was being in the rental business and or selling you know selling it to somebody a management company or somebody to manage or somebody else to own it. I didn't know right. what the provisions of the grant would be. There's one area that they have said that the, those regulations are still being developed, but what they're interested in being able to um, certify is that people that meet the moderate income limits are, in fact, the ones that are occupying the property. So they would like, they need some type of mechanism for reporting. The owner of the property has That's to be able to do that. So. Um, you have less control if you sell that property over right. making sure that that's yeah. done. But at any rate, what they need to be able to certify is for a period of time, whatever that is, for a three year again, they haven't totally written the regulations on this, is my understanding, that you're certifying the people that meet this moderate income designation or, you know, parameter are, are, are occupying the property. Which I think I was, yeah. to, I think it's between like 30 and 100,000 for a, a family of four. Yeah. It fits certainly a lot of the income ranges typical of this area. I'm just I'm thinking over that in the last week. I don't it's not too much difference if they're managing the property. Well, correct. Okay. I don't think our schedule's full next week, Anita. There's nothing. <laughs> 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 Good time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Open, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll recess. Just a moment. Services Incorporated. With me today, Jerry Max, board member. Stafford County and Steve Sandoval, the chief program officer with us, and in the back, in the back. <laughs> Brad Brock, he's our uh, uh, quality assurance manager and the great men officer. And I'm sorry that I've had to reschedule it, I know at least once, maybe twice, I can't remember. <laughs> but the state of Kansas, we had a, uh, with some, I believe it was a contract negotiator, a couple different meetings. And, your packet here uh, shows the 18 counties we serve as a community developmental disability organization. And the, the very first page I, I have found through years of doing this, if I put the presentation material in the front and put the request in the back, I, I would look up and see the commissioner's looking for what's he asking for <laughs> and not listening. So I'm just going to get this out of the way to begin with when we talk about the request from the counties. What we have done here. Just put together a request based on population, uh, and I did I, that first column there, or the second column actually, next to the county, 2010 census data. Actually, I didn't change that for I, I missed it. It's 2012 estimated census data. It's from the same source. It's just a 
uh, and have dated uh, uh, census information estimated from the second census bureau. So the 18 counties right there, the total population we use that. When you look at the CDBL administration, what we're asking for there, we anticipate will be used about $160,000 out of the total pot money that we get for our budget. And we just asked for them, we just took it, divided that by 18 counties and asked for the same amount for each county because essentially we have the same responsibilities for each county and what we do within the population. Then we have a request for population. That total amount, the 743257 is a dollar amount that we've used for years. If we've not changed it, we've not increased it. Uh, and then what, what uh, happens there, of course, is that it's prorated based, based upon the population of the county to the whole of the 18. In Stafford County, you can see 21188 plus the 8889 a total of $30,077. So it changed a little bit from last year. And again, I'll point out that is because of the estimated uh, census so that's the total request. And at any point, if you have any questions of me or any of us, please stop and ask. I didn't put this in your packet, but just to let you know the, the uh, 18 counties that we serve in Medicaid money, it's a little bit over $26 million what the providers get paid. In the southwest area, 13 counties, there's a map at the very end of this that you'll see what I'm talking about here. The southwest 13 counties we serve, we built out a little bit over 14.2, almost 14.3 million. And these five counties are providers almost 11 million million dollars. That gets paid directly to them. They provide the service they build to the Medicaid that they pay directly. What they get from us comes through counties and also it's called state aid. And I'll show you here in a moment, the very next page that you're looking at there, how we use that money for local finance plan. We pay out to the providers. The big ticket item there is transportation. As you can see, in 2012, we paid it 710000 And then we have a few other categories that we pay out on also. What we project to pay out for 2013 is a little bit less because we received a little bit less. So but we project to pay 641000 a little bit over that for 2013. The adult service, I want to point this out real quick too. At the very bottom of that, there was adult services. In the state of Kansas, we can determine someone eligible for services. This is the criteria the state has set up. We used to get state grant funded money, SGF. And that's all it was. It was not Medicaid, so it was not federally matched dollars. And an individual could be eligible for services, but not waiver eligible. So then at that point in time, a few years ago, we had a little over $14 million statewide we used, and it was cut in half one year to seven. I think another year it went, got cut, cut to like three or three and a half, and then it went to zero. I don't think it's ever going to return. So we can sit and, and, and go through uh, the evaluation process and determine somebody eligible or not eligible for the waiver. But, oh, by the way, we have no money to serve you with. Well, we do use some local money for some folks. We do a needs-based assessment for that individual. And it may just take a few hours a week for them uh, to help with with uh, budgeting, cooking, and hopefully this keeps them out of uh, keeps them in a home. So we don't have folks going homeless. It keeps them from the out of getting in trouble with the law. And sometimes uh, financially, otherwise, that can happen. And it, it, it keeps keeps them in. And it's very, very inexpensive the way that we do. The local finance plan is actually the next four pages, too. I want to point out the second page. There's three paragraphs there that are kind of bolded on page two of the plan, and we added them this past year. Um, we require all of our providers to give us, if, they're, if, if they bill, if they're to the level of billing on Medicaid, they're going to be required to do an audit. If they do that, then we require them to give us a copy of that audit. Or if they're not at that level, we require them to do a review. And that review uh, essentially is done by an independent party, such as a CPA firm, the county firm, something like that. And they'll, they'll go through and pull them up randomly and look at the billing for Medicaid. They'll look at the, what was, what was uh, the documentation that they have for the Medicaid. And uh, they'll also look and see if they have employees, do they pay their 
withholdings, state withholdings, federal withholdings, and so on. And the last two paragraphs deal more with that. We, we actually had a problem one time, uh, but that didn't happen for several years. We didn't get a review for several years. When we got one, they were way behind the federal withholdings. That's a point of an IRS federal lien for the $432,000. So we decided at that point in time, the only thing we really have control of in the dollars is what you give us, the counties, and what the state aid. So we decided we're not paying those organizations. We just want to stop that. So who, who yeah. are your providers? It'll be here in just a moment. Okay. <laughs> we, we have, and I'm not going to name the provider. But, no, I but, don't want to do that. I just want to do the movie. I just want to really work. Yeah. And we have a number of them. If you get it, one other thing there at the bottom of page two. We have this, the, the board had decided that. We, we uh, I haven't heard it. I wanted this out to the commissioner just so they know it. And, and really just in case there's any kind of backlash, we have to you know, understand what we did, why we did what we do. And I, I've not heard anything yet with this individual or other companies going and talking about this. But the other thing at the bottom of page two there is how we pay this out. In transportation, for instance, we pay $88 per month to a provider and it's residential services. If they're providing day services, $41. If they're providing both, it's kind of $21. If the person moves from one provider to another provider, they have that option to do that. At a point in time, they can make choices. And when they do that, the money goes with them. At least get billed from each provider on the number of individuals per service they provided to that previous month. So here in July, the first part of July, we got billed from providers that they provided services to 15 or 30 or whatever. Folks for day services and then how X member for residential and X for health member for both of those. So anyway, that's what the way it works. Here's a provider list right here. And these are the direct care or and or case management providers because we do have some that just provide case management. We have some that just provide day and residential. We have some who provide day and residential and case management. As you can see there, in, in, for instance, in Great Bend, we've got Duke Larson, Independent Case Management, that's all that Duke does. Pathways Rest Care, Rosewood Services, Insurance Independent Case Management, again, that's all she does. And then Sunfire Diversified Services. So that's the providers mainly in the Independent Care Bend area, certain folks over here. We really don't have many that provide, we don't have anybody that provides it between the five counties over here around Great Bend that we serve in this area and the five or the 13 that we're on the uh, city and they're all uh, nobody does it. It's a good thing. And you'll see some mosaics or you'll see uh, some res care, but they're actually independent organizations. We have a res care in Garden City liberal area and we have a res care over here, but they're separate for it. And it's part of the res care corporate structure, but they're they're independent. They have license for each location. As well as the record for each location. But as you can see, we do have a few providers and folks have choices. And they do exercise that right when they when they want to to change the There's a page here that, that the next one shows the duties and responsibilities that SDSI performs as a community developmental disability organization. This is the same information has been has been provided year after year after year. I know a couple of you new here, but but uh, Really, the only thing that's changed on here is the top bullet is the numbers. We uh, have approximately 1,109 individuals in our service area. We have 606 who receive residential day or income supports, and 327 who receive case management only. And all those numbers have increased. But just to let you know a couple of other things here, we do, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of hit the top bullet, we do perform quality assurance. Brad does that here in our area. Five counties checks for services provided to individuals with developmental disabilities. Uh, we do perform annual basis assessments on all eligible individuals. Brad's part of that also. Here in this area, we have folks over at the Garden City office. We're the single point of entry, so if somebody wants to uh, seek eligibility, whether or not they're eligible for services, they come to us and we'll do that. We have an admissions manager, actually, in the process of hiring them here in this office in Great Bend. We have one in the third city office. We act as the gatekeeper. Really, what the gatekeeper does is deal with the state hospitals and the people who 
going in or how to going in is not a process that's very easy to do because we don't we as a system in the state of Kansas do not want folks going into the state hospitals that would be a lawyer. We would rather have them coming out of state hospitals and serving them in the community. It's much cheaper and we have found that it's much more um, rewarding for the individual they they do much better in the community versus in the state hospital. Not saying anything bad about state hospitals, but it's just it's that's that's the reality. There's an org chart here. Um, as I said, the board of directors, Jerry is your board member here from Stafford County. We are, our uh, bylaws call for the ability for each county to serve county board member. And uh, uh, we have three counties right now that we do not have board members from. So as I'm making the you got your last one, this is the 18th one I've seen, but uh, as far as commissioners, the three that don't, I'm making sure they realize that. And, if you have somebody, let me know. If you have a new call. We actually had five meetings scheduled this year. We ended up canceling one, so uh, we're going to have four. And probably next year, we'll probably I'll probably be able to re recommending four meetings that we do quarterly. And that takes care of business. And I think it, as far as what we need for for approval of things from the board, and, uh, we haven't had a problem with having four meetings because we've been several years where we've actually canceled uh, four meetings. So. Anyway, including myself. There's ten folks, seven out of the Garden City office and three out of the Great office. Of course, we don't duplicate when we add. We added. We actually added these five counties back in 2004 when uh, Barton County started the process of putting out an RFP for a for a CDDO, Community Developmental Disability Organization, that did not provide services. And we were one of three organizations that answered that. RFP they chose us and the other four counties, Stafford, Pawnee, Rice, and Russian counties also followed up. There's a page here that, that uh, has the applications that we received for this year. This goes back to 2005. Uh, the 2013 information is only through March 20th when we put this packet together. So, but, but this just shows you the, the changes in. in members as far as folks applying for services that we determined eligible and the folks would determine ineligible. And some we just end up closing bond because uh, we start the, they start the process and we start that with them. Uh, they don't get back to us. They don't, you know, there's information we have to have. And, and things happen and we just move out of the county, out of the state, or we just end up closing bond after we've made it. try to get in touch with them again and, and, and when that fails then at some point in time we'll, we'll close the file. There's a waiting list there, the middle part of the page there just shows the HCBS waiting list, that's the Medicaid waiver. And then there's the waiting list for local funds. And the local funds, as I said earlier, that was that SGF money that no longer exists, that we do use some of the local money we get from the from counties and the state aid that goes together. The very last page is the map of the state of Kansas, the 27 CDOs. And you can see the 13 counties we serve in the very southwest corner of the state of Kansas, and then the five right there uh, here in central Kansas. And with that, uh, I must say, though, that uh, Stafford County, excuse me, we sure uh, do appreciate what, what uh, y'all have done through the years to help individuals with, uh, with a enhanced services for individuals with developmental disabilities. It, it, it helps the service providers, uh, and, and you know the big ticket item again is transportation. But with the fuel prices, with the price of maintaining vehicles and buying vehicles, and, and getting people to and from doctors' appointments, to and from uh, shopping activities, to and from recreational events, you know just the very things that you and I take for granted that we're able to jump in our car or our truck or whatever and head to the store, head from town to wherever, and, and you know, these folks depend on somebody else to do that. So. Service providers, I know that, that uh, transportation is not cheap. It's not getting cheaper as well. So we do appreciate what you've done. And again, I think it's really helpful if you're going to provide treatment for you. Now, with that, I'll stand for any questions or anybody. I don't know if you may have anything to add here, Jerry. Well, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Since uh, Kurt and Shane are new to the system here, 
I just wanted to point out that <coughs> the request, <coughs> excuse me, has been less the last two or three years. We went to a new system out there of requesting how we request it. And probably the amount of money that we request from Stafford County is probably a couple, three thousand less than what it was before uh, that time. And uh, I sat on the Sunflower Diversified Board for nine years. And I've been on this board about nine years now. And you do this start to find for Yeah. So I have a good grasp of their operations with them. And, and they do an excellent job. They have a uh, foundation out there left over from when they were providers, and they routinely fund a lot of things. Another thing that I want to point out is that all this money that we see from these 18 counties is distributed equally between the 13 out there and the five here. You know, they don't they don't just use our five county money for here and their 13 county money. It's all divided out. So. You know, you're just part of the pie here. You know, just you know, they, they use everybody's money for everybody. Yeah, because when we first started, the way that mm -hmm. money was requested from these five counties was different from what we had done. And I imagine if you look across the state, 27 CDOs all at that time were 28. So we actually had two separate local finance plans. What was in these five counties stayed in these five counties, and still didn't stay there. A few, after a few years, we combined and we combined also that we changed the request. And we thought we had to change the request. And when we did that, Stafford County went down quite a bit. I'm thinking you guys were, I'm thinking it was around $60,000 at one point. So yeah, it was about. considerable. Yeah. Yeah. And then they had adjusted and made like everybody else. But I was thinking it was just like a couple, three thousand, which is, you know. I'm for anybody to ask for less. <laughs> but uh, I just want to tell Kurt and Shane that. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought it. It's not out of, out of line what we're asking for from Stafford County, the services that the people from Stafford County receive to them. And, and when we added these five counties, our foundation, we have a couple million dollars in the foundation, the private foundation. What we do with that money, uh, we have grants, and then we have what we call an emergency request where we end up with those emergency requests we will fund and, and we added these five counties and then just keep that over there. Uh, we'll request dental is one of the big things that, that Medicaid just does not pay for. With this new managed care coming in, it's supposed to pay for some dental work, but it's not going to pay for the crowns, it's not going to pay for Medicaid will pay to have your teeth pulled, but they won't pay for anything else to be done after. So uh, I guess you're supposed to puree your food and then on and make or something like that. Um, we have paid for, for the dentures a couple thousand dollars a pot. And, and it, you know, other things too, we paid for iPads and we paid for uh, paid three wheel tricycles for, for kids that, that, uh, to get them that helps them. We pay for a number of different things through that foundation and it comes over here too. So uh, we've been able to, to do that. And that's one thing we want to see that will make a difference in the individual's life. I guess we're done. Uh, Unless you have any questions. Well, a couple of years ago, uh, I attended one of the commission meetings, state meetings. They were talking about a, a mini bus rule, bus service. Did that ever come to be, or were they waiting on grants or? They were saying, when you were talking about transportation, that was one of the things they were saying. It was, it was north central Kansas, the northern part and western part of Kansas, that they were trying to devise some, and it was a minibus route service. I, I, I'm not aware of that. And that was through, I forget who it was. They and had they, that for uh, clients. Yeah. People within the system. Yes. And I don't know if an individual could ride that bus or not. They can in Great Bend. In general, yeah, great bend. general public, they do in yeah. Great Bend. But as far, and we have an individual who lives in St. John that drives the bus for Sunflower that picks up people. Okay, let me ask this one. And Sunflower does participate in that KDOT program yeah. that they're able to get some KDOT money. Yeah, that's what it was. And what routes they run, I couldn't tell you for yeah. sure. I think they there are out-of-community 
But it was to dental offices, medical offices. Yeah. It was strictly for health reasons, not, not to go oh. shopping. The general public will take you anyone anywhere. Yeah. You just have to make arrangements. Okay. okay. And the ride's cheap. The ride tickets are really reasonable. I'm sure you have to call in advance to make sure. Oh, yeah. Well, this was some grandiose idea that someone came up with, and I just wanted to put it Got off the drawing board. To me, it sounded like it was going to be a pretty expensive project. Yeah, that's to me, just for what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Well, thank you, appreciate it. Well, maybe next time I'll know you better. That's it. See you in a race then. Yeah, I do. I do. We're still in. Oh, we're still in. Still in. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Hey, well, on the <laughs> prisoners, you know, Jeff is talking about a TV camera and so on and so forth. Oh, yeah. Does that have to be, have to have an approval from the judge to pursue something like that? Or yeah, I'll put it up to the sheriff. Or but the biggest problem is, is we're dealing with multiple jails. Are the other county, do they do, do you know if they do that? I know they do it all the time in Sedgwick County. Right. Um, I didn't know if we knew the jails were participating with it. Yeah, the as, as far as other jails, one, one to check with might be Rice County Jail, because I know they make a practice of housing prisoners from other counties. Tim Weaver is a jail administrator of Rice County. I can call him. Um, but just from you know, anecdotal you know, personal knowledge, I know they don't have any setups like that. And, um, it's like Russell County or uh, Ellsworth County or uh, um, Saline County. Lincoln County, they do the march. It's actually about three, three, four block march of the prisoner. <laughs> in public? Yeah. Well, the public can do it. Well, it's the same like there'd be a, an economical way, you know, for like to have Barton and Pratt and, and Greensburg. Well, let's see. At Pratt, I didn't bring it with me, so I'm relying upon what I glanced at an hour or so ago. I think we got a couple in Edwards, a couple in Kiowa. Uh, nobody in Pratt at present, but some people in, uh, I believe, Pawnee, and some people in Burton. You don't know if any of them are set up to do anything like that? So uh, I, know, I know Edwards County is not because, you know, they, that's the old style jail where it's on the top floor of the courthouse, yeah. so there's really no need. Pawnee County, I think they just walk them across the street. Um, I think that's the thing that the counties that want to do that might have to provide the computer and the sky camera and stuff to do. Because uh, in Pratt County, you know, they, they got the courthouses on this here of the jails that are just walking across the alleyway. Saline County is where you think they have it set up, but I know they don't. Because I don't know how familiar you know downtown Salina, but the old courthouse is now whatever building they built a new kind of like two-story kind of flat courthouse, but it's it's on the same piece of property as the library. And so when they had to build a new jail, they built it three or four blocks over. Actually, the new jail is hooked into the Salina Municipal Building, not the county building. Every one of those jails would have a computer. All you'd have to do is set up a Skype camera and a place to do it. It wouldn't be that well, big a deal. If they have the people. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they have the people. Well, it would be something Mark Jeff could pursue to right see. Too, I, I, I mean, I, I, I can, I'll call Rice County because they're like the newest jail, or one of the newest jails in the state. They, they take a lot of prisoners from other counties. Of course, they charge. We don't use Rice County because they charge so much. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to keep it at $45 per prisoner per day. Rice County is charging like 85 Because somebody asked me, how come you guys don't use Rice County? Well, it's called cost. And 
Now, Central County, apparently, they have lots of money to borrow. So I know Central County's got a whole contingent there in the Rice County Jail. Rice County Jail's capacity is like 70. It's one of those overbuilt jails. In fact, I also ought to check with uh, to myself. Ottawa County, that's not Ottawa, Kansas, it's Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Ottawa County, that was a purposefully built, overbuilt jail because they always house Saloon County. Well, Ottawa County and Rice County, see what they're doing. Those are two of your newer jails. Recess. And the purpose is to do the amended budget for 2013. I make a motion we accept the amended budget for 2013. Second. It's been moved and second. We adopt the amended budget for 2013. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion, or, all opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Sure.